You've been fiending for a little Scientific Tuesdays? Well, guess what? We're back. My name's Dylan Hart, and I give you the ideas long forgotten or never thought of. And I show you how easy it is for you to make them in your own house. We've made some great devices on Scientific Tuesdays, but I want to go old school. I'm talking ancient. Today I'm going to show you a technique for keeping food or any other item cold without electricity. And we're not just talking cold, we're talking icy. So come along with me, and welcome to the realm of the flower pot fridge. This episode of Scientific Tuesdays is brought to you by Squarespace. To make this cooling device, you're gonna need two clay pots, generally used for planting in flowers. As you'll notice, there's holes at the bottom of the pot. We're gonna need to plug those up to avoid leakage later on. So use some duct tape, some clay, some putty, anything you've got laying around that'll form a good seal. This method of cooling is centuries old, but it works so well, you're gonna wonder why you don't see it more often. After we've got the holes in the pots plugged, we're gonna put in a small layer of sand at the bottom, probably about three to four centimeters. Now river sand or dam sand works the best. I happen to have some play box sand laying around and that's what I'm using for this particular instance. Once we've got a layer on the bottom, we're gonna put the smaller pot into the larger pot. And when that's in there securely, I'm gonna begin filling up all the gaps on the side with the remainder of sand that I have. This device has many names. You might have heard it referred to as the pot and pot refrigerator, but most commonly, it's known as the zeer pot. Once we have the sand filled up all around the sides between the two pots, we're gonna start saturating the sand with water. This might take longer than you'd expect, but after a few cups of water, I was able to see there was no more going into the sand. Now we're not looking to make the sand muddy. We just wanna make it damp. We're not going off-roading or anything. So once you have the wet sand complete, you're gonna grab a towel and you're going to soak it as well. Knock off some of the excess water and then lay the towel over the pot. Believe it or not, the fridge is complete. Now this is gonna cool down the inner chamber through water evaporation. When exposed to heat, the water in the sand is going to evaporate towards the outer surface of the large pot. Energy within the inner pot is going to be lost, which is going to cause a significant decrease in temperature. So let's see how good this thing really works. I'm gonna drop a refrigerator thermometer inside the chamber and we'll test it out over the course of 12 hours. Okay, now I put a little chart up here to show you the temperature ranges over the 12 hour period. As you can see here, around eight in the morning, it was about 65 degrees. And then we ranged up all the way to a high of 92. Now this is the outside temperature. Let's check out the chamber. As you'd expect, the chamber temperature actually decreased throughout the day. Let's take a look at it step by step. Here was the first major drop around 1 p.m. So as you can see, we actually got the temperature down to about 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15.5 C. This is pretty astounding considering the fact that it was about 87 degrees outside at the time. So the evaporative cooling was already working quite well. The next big drop we noticed was around 4 p.m. Here, take a look. So at this point, we managed to drop down to about 52 degrees Fahrenheit or 11 C. We're almost getting into beer chilling zone now. So let's give it another hour or two and see where we end up. The 6 p.m. progress check was our favorite. It was well over 90 degrees outside and we managed to actually dip into the 40s for a brief few minutes. Now, of course, this didn't stay there too long because we let out all the air checking the temperature, but it's time to really put this thing to the test. Let's drop in a couple beers. We gave it a good hour in the pot and when we opened it up, they were chilled to the touch. Yes, two frosty cold ones. You can have any beer you want, as long as it's Vin Diesel. Isn't it amazing what people can pull off when it comes to necessity or absolute survival? Now we obviously use this apparatus for our own personal use, but think about those countries out there that don't have a lot of electricity available. You could use something like this to chill vegetables, fruits, medical supplies, and that in turn opens up the floodgates for the domino effect. Now some people in many countries can send their kids to school. They no longer have to help their parents sell their goods before they rot. In fact, applying this ancient technology across some third world countries has resulted in a 50% income increase to many women across the world. Now that I've given you a cold one, you can definitely check out my cool sponsor this week, Squarespace. Squarespace, in short, is a publishing platform that allows you to make exceptional websites or blogs without ever touching a line of code. Quite different from all the alternatives, Squarespace is a fully hosted and fully managed environment. So you don't have to deal with any domain hosting issues. You can use their powerful and intuitive interface to completely customize your website. We're talking blogs, e-commerce sites, even nonprofit organizations. They've got everything under their wing. 
Look, I'm not the only one who loves Squarespace. They've gotten accolades from TechCrunch, Business Week, even the Wall Street Journal. And if you head over to squarespace.com right now and use the code SCIENCE7, you'll get two weeks free and 10% off your order if you decide to sign up. You know what? You gotta do this in July though, so you better act fast. So you're stuck in the desert and need to cool down some beers, but you don't got a lot to work with. In fact, one might say you've got dog shit. <laughs> 